grownfolksmusic.com. Welcome back to grownfolksmusic.com. Thank Thank you so much for always uh, taking time for us. You're one of our favorites around here, so it's always a pleasure to talk to you. you. Thank you for saying so. You are, first of all, you have a new album coming out, but did you think you would be five albums deep at this point in the game? Man, I was just telling one of, uh, someone was interviewing me today and I was just talking about it. And this person happened to be there day one, day uh, song one. Mm-hmm. Uh, and no, I didn't. I mean, there's no way I could have imagined it. Oh man, you're making me think about a story. Well, I tell went the Essence. story. I know you tell stories on IG. Yeah. You better go ahead and tell the story. I went to Essence one year. It was um, when I was a new artist and it was, we were back in the press room and I got up, introduced myself as you do, you know, back there to people. And they didn't know who I was. And I was, I was telling them I was on my, my first album, first song, really happy to be here. I get off the stage, and I won't say who the artist was, but a very uh, prominent artist and experienced artist got up behind me and was kind of giggling like, well, I'm on my 10th album, you know. And when he oh, said wow. it, the span just really struck me. Like, yo, that, that's a lot of music, you know? And ever since that day, that was my prayer, that I was a, that I was a part of music and a catalog um, that was extensive and that people saw as valuable. Just, you know, but I, I, you made me think about that story, you know, just how, how far we've come. We've come a long way. Mm-hmm. Two record labels, you're still on. Motown Gospel. Yeah. So I'm excited about that. Um, let's talk about the album still. Yes. And first the title and what that what that means and from the broadest to the most narrow sense. Okay. Um, I'm gonna give you a narrow sense that I think is the most important piece mm-hmm. of it, and that is that it's about focus mm-hmm. and finding a way to uh, despite what I believe is our enemy's effort to use distraction and ten, uh, ramp up anxiety and fear and worry and uncertainty about tomorrow to keep us from finishing our work, despite those efforts, finding a way to stay focused uh, on what you know you should be doing. And if you don't know, focus enough, uh, long enough to find out what that is. Uh, As if what you're doing can contribute to helping us all, to helping us all uh, be less anxious and less worried and less fearful about tomorrow, helping us all form a better, more perfect, more perfect union. Maybe we could do that, you know, if we all just kind of focused on what we were supposed to focus on. So that's, that's one of the things still is about, is the stillness in our heart, I think we're afforded when we believe that we have a God that sits high and looks low and um, will never leave us or forsake us, is merciful enough to abide with us and then mighty enough to fix what ails us, to repair, to help us repair. Uh, And then in a broader sense, I, I think it has several different meanings for me in terms of their, and I, I just, kind of alluded to that there are things that we still can believe in, even when it looks like those things are not true. Um, and no, and that's what I just said, that God is present and still a present help and still mm-hmm. um, available for us to access. And there are also, again, still mountains that we have to face down. In fact, we, I, we address a head on with inner city blues and, uh, I love that my label, Motown Gospel, gave me the opportunity to put it on the record, uh, smack dab in the middle of the record, as this reminder that even after 50 years since Marvin Gaye wrote the classic song, the lyrics of it are still, still relevant. And um, if you just focus on that part, it could it could bring some despair. But I'm glad that they allowed us to put it on a gospel record because we don't settle for the blues here. We don't just holler and we're not heard. We believe that God enters in and uh, gives us good news to tell. There is good news that um, God has not condemned the world, but came to save it. And we are um, 
we are party to his salvation, depending on the way we operate and what we do and the choices we make. You were talking about uh, fear. Well, let me back up a little bit. Did you start this album before 2020 was what it what it has been? Were you already in the process of making the album, or is this album um, influenced by just the things that have taken place in 2020 and, and how you wanted to encourage and address the people of God through your music? Uh, I love the question. Um, for me, it always starts with this period of rumination, you know, so in many ways it did start before that. Just being real about my own fear and anxieties and the times that I have, I have been distracted from the past or uh, had to look at mountains in the past and, and, and feel like, oh, that's too much to handle and too much to tackle. And we finished the song still right before everything shut down. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I just knew it was going to be part of my next project. I didn't know that I was going to make it the centerpiece of it. I just knew mm -hmm. that those were things I wanted to speak to. I even had a meeting with some writers uh, connected to the publishing house at my label, and they were gracious enough to sit down with me and just tell my heart and listen to the song. One writer came back 48 hours later. His name is Jeff Pardo award-winning writer on um, the Christian, contemporary Christian music side with a song called Fear Is Not Welcome. And so it kind of really solidified it. Okay, this is the direction we're gonna go in um, in terms of addressing these issues. And I'm grateful, it just it felt like God was making it coalesce in the middle of this pandemic, which had its own challenges in terms of trying to record music. Mm -hmm. um, but it came together, it came together. I was going to ask you about Fear is Not Welcome, but you mentioned Inner City Blues and mm -hmm. the label allowing you to sing, but it, it seems natural that the song would return home. Motown was Marvin Gaye's first recorded right. home. And you have another cover that made it, that has Motown roots, maybe not the label, but the Detroit roots. I'm from Detroit, so whenever I get to oh, shout out you Detroit. You already know, yeah. <laughs> so you did, um, you know, the remake of the Winans and the Anita Baker, Baker classic. And what, uh, what, had, what inspired you to do that? Was just that always a favorite or just continuing the theme of no fear and no worry? It's absolutely has always been a favorite. The Winans have always been a favorite. I wish I could tell you, my picture of Anita Baker, there she go. <laughs> she <up in> the <laughs> Anita Baker is a favorite. And they're, let me, they're favorites because they always bring like this sense of comfort, like when you, when you hear them to me, right? And so I was listening to or looking on Instagram and saw where Donald Lawrence had posted a clip of Miranda Curtis doing a cover of Love's In Need of Love today, which is a bit divergent from what we know her for. She does like praise and worship music typically. And this was a, kind of a departure, this cover. Mm -hmm. And Donald commented and said, you know, he loved to hear this texture in her voice. And then I, I don't know what I said, but he came back and said, you and her ought to do a cover of Ain't No Need to Worry. Mm -hmm. And it hit me so like, man, we do need to do it. He had no idea what I was working on musically and thematically. But I was, I felt so strongly about it. I, I texted him and I said, hey, man, please take that down. Let somebody else take that idea because we're going to do that. And I reached out to uh, her MD, Justin Savage, who ended up producing it for us. Um, Miranda was gracious enough to come along and we were able to pull it together virtually. Like I said, the logistics um, did not lend themselves to having us all in the same room, mm -hmm. but we were able to pull it together. And I'm so glad she did it because one of the things I love about Miranda, even before this was um, presented as a prospect, was the conviction in her voice. There's one song in particular that I just love. It's called I'm All In that she does. Mm -hmm. And it's three minutes, man, where she just convinces you that she's all in. And not only that, I want to be all in too. Like, you know, so I think when you say um, or you deliver a message like ain't no need to worry, given the circumstances that we find ourselves in, you need to be able to say it with conviction mm -hmm. and in a way that makes people lean in. And uh, I think she does that. You mentioned Instagram. So I've caught you on Instagram Live 
talking oh, and, inter and interviewing people. And <laughs> I know that you have now uh, a radio show yeah. and a, a program that crosses over to Facebook Live. Is that correct? Yes. So, talk, the talk about how you got into this part of the ministry. Um, it's called Breathe Again, right? It's a couple, it's a couple things that kind of coalesced. One was uh, my my pastor and mentor and friend has a radio show, a radio station that he has uh, running. And he had been asking me a couple of times to start this radio show with him. And I just, I never really found the time to do it. Nor did I know what I would call it or whatever. And then when the um, the quarantine happened, and in many ways, you know, allow people to kind of focus and pause and see what was going on. I love that it's 2020, actually, because you can see more Vision. clearly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You caught it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he, I sat down, and one of the things that struck me about this time is how um, our lungs were being attacked with the virus, mm. and how you know people are losing their ability to breathe, and then couple that with we literally watched George Floyd's breath taken away in front of us with depraved indifference. One of the things I wanted to speak in response to this is that if you're still breathing, that's a gift that you should not take for granted. And I believe it's a gift that you could use to help somebody else do it too. Breathe again and, and look into the future with a view towards building for something better. And so that's what Breathe Again was about for me. And we, you know, my team was like, hey man, why don't you just start doing something on Instagram and see if people will come talk to you. And I started with my good friend and mentor, Juanita Rasmus, who's the husband of the person who asked me to do the radio show. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you've heard her name, I've been dropping it. She has a book called Learning to Be. And she came on the first night and she talked about how she was, that got to this book and she's giving us tools literally on using this breath and understanding that this breath is a divine gift that you need to cherish and you can use to literally tamp down your fears and anxiety. So that was the start and I just kept doing it week to week and I'm just like, hey man, we're going to do it as long as there's resource to do it, you know? Uh, I caught one of those Instagram lives. Um, Which one? I caught the one. When I, I'm trying to. I, my Marcus D. Wiley. That's who it was. That's my man. <laughs> and when you said, "It's not that God won't put you in in rooms. We just don't like the rooms that He's yes. already put us in." He He reminded me of something I said. And then That's you stopped and said, "We're gonna pray right here." And then he prayed, but this is the part that got me. You said, Lord, help us to redecorate the rooms we're already in. Oh, man. Well, man. then I had to comment and say, you don't know what you just said. I remember the comment, actually. Now, yeah, 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 I do. Yeah. You don't know what, maybe you did know what you said, but it, it, it has forced me to literally rethink decorating a room literally in my house when I said I wasn't doing that, I wasn't investing, I'm at a certain point in my life, I don't want to do that. And so I've done that. My goodness. And how you so, feel about it? Um, I feel pretty good about it. Um, yeah. I've done a little bit more than I wanted to and thinking about doing a little bit more than that. And I'm just like, this wasn't the plan. <laughs> this wasn't my plan. I but it was. It wasn't my plan. I'm sitting in a room like that myself, that I, you know, I had no intention on doing what we're doing in here, and I love it in here now. I just love it, you know? And uh, you know what? There's a, a, a preacher, Darius Daniels, that has been doing this sermon series called Dream Chasers, mm -hmm. that really speaks to that and, and, and talks about, um, oh man, now I can't remember the Bible verse. Oh, the one, what's the verse about, I know the plans I have for you, plans not to harm you, but to give is you that, good success. Is that Jeremiah? Is that Jeremiah. Jeremiah. And he's preaching from Jeremiah. You, you got and a good one, because I don't know the whole thing, but I know that. 
Oh yeah. So if you get a chance, anybody that's listening, find that, find that sermon where he talks about that and Jeremiah and the prospect of of what the people were facing and how they faced it down. Because I think that there's some parallels there for all of us in terms of that, well, hey, man, we're going to make it work where we are Mm -hmm. and not let the the fact that it feels like confinement and maybe is confinement in many ways keep us from building and moving forward. We still can move forward. And it may be that we, like you said, we were just supposed to pause and oh, sit man. down. When when you're moving, you know, I found being busy, it didn't have to decorate the room, but then when everybody came home, they started looking around at the house, like, well, where have we been all that time? Has that always been like that? And how long have we had that? And, man, th- and things day. of that nature, yeah. All day. I'm telling you, I've been faced with it. Like, man, I didn't know that. I literally stripped a door, took it down, put it back. A door, I had been looking at that door forever, man. And I was so proud that I was able to fix it. I fixed the lock that had been broken for years. I just Mm -hmm. hadn't paid attention to it, you know? We were just rolling with it. Yeah, I I painted. I've been painting. I've been painting, yeah. It's it's been something. If you, because I know we're pressed for time. If you were in an elevator, and I didn't know you as an artist. And I know you as an artist because I got all the albums. And so I remember the first album and the first single and all of that. So we've been rocking with you for a while. Yeah. And I appreciate your ministry. Thank you. And I've told you that before. I appreciate you as an artist, not just a gospel artist, but your voice. So the fact that you did ain't no need to worry. I had noticed before, I knew that. Marvin Winans had given you an album, a song on the last album. I did. didn't notice until you sang Ain't No Need to Worry. Did, I don't know if it was intentional. I didn't realize you had a tone that was similar to Pastor Marvin L. Winans. And so oh, I, I tell you I, what, when I go to Detroit, they like, hey man, are you trying to cop <laughs> the after Marvin? Well, you would, have, <laughs> you would have to do that high pitch woo that he does, that long woo yeah. in order to really. Yeah. But, I, um, yeah, I was saying if if I was in an elevator and I didn't know your music ministry, tell me why I need still. Like if you had a hard copy of it, a CD, tell me why I need this album. Ah, oh, man. I would tell, this is what I tell everybody too. I think this will help you. I think this will help you. Oh, you know what? That's not true. I don't tell everybody that because I don't think, when I feel led, and I feel like, man, okay, this person will recognize what I'm putting in front of them as valuable, then I will tell them that. I'll say, hey, man, I, I really believe this will help you. And that's what I say, would say about the record. And it would, I don't like to confine, we've been using that word a lot, what that might mean for the person when they hear it, you know? Because I know my reasons for saying what I was saying uh, but the beautiful thing about music, the beautiful thing about making these combinations with people, um, these connections, uh, they can lead to uh, a mosaic that you had not previously imagined, you know? And so I would just start with, man, I believe this will help you and and let it go from there. And prayerfully, our interaction was... was um, cool enough, I guess, sweet enough. We used to, we say that in church a lot. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. Mm. Our interaction led to uh, an exchange that was sweet enough where the person was like, yeah, you know, I will check that out. I'm going to see if that means something to me, you know. This is the part of the interview when we shout it out. That means you get to tell us all things, Brian Courtney Wilson, where we can get the album in two days. Uh, yes. stream by download uh, where we can catch the radio program, the Instagram lives, the Facebook lives, merch, all of it. Tell us all things, Brian Courtney. Well, yes. Oh, and your social media handles too. Please. Yes. Uh, our, our Instagram is Brian Courtney Wilson on Instagram. We've actually moved the show you're talking about to our Facebook live page now. Okay. And so that's um, Brian Courtney Wilson on Facebook. 
Uh, the website is Brian Courtney Wilson. The Twitter is the only black sheep. That's V Courtney Wilson. So if you get a chance, you can follow us there. And the music is uh, actually available for pre-save and uh, what do they call it? Pre-order mm -hmm. right now. You right can go now. to a loop on my Instagram page to find that. Uh, but it's going to be available on all streaming sites, wherever music is listened to or sold this Friday, October 16th. And I can't wait for you to hear what's been on my heart. I think I, I do. I think it'll help. You, you talked about wanting to have music that has value. Well, this music does have value. Your music always has since the beginning. And I know that will continue. Thank you. Waiting to turn had value. Ah, oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm only complaining is why y'all cut it off at the end at the old at the Lenny Williams O's like when it was getting good. That's my only complaint. Just yeah. Obey has some value. A great Thank work you. has value. Worth Thank fighting you. for. Nothing occurs to God. Can you tell I'm a fan? So. I can say I appreciate <laughs> that too, man. And it, it means so much because you you know, you just kind of digging and digging, and sometimes you don't know. You don't know how it's hitting people and reaching people and if people care enough about what it's costing you to keep going. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so I appreciate that word uh, to me because it's encouraging. And I, I, man, I just really appreciate it. Thank keep you. Keep doing what you're doing. God bless you. God bless your wife. I know your son just got out of school. God bless him. God bless your daughter. Bless everybody. Thank you. And come back again and hang out with us. I can't wait. I'm going to order me a shirt, too. Please do. Wait. Yes. Please do. Rep the crew. All right. And you take you favor to you, too. Everybody listening, I've been speaking this blessing. I hope the Lord blesses you in ways that overwhelm you and make you want to cry in public mm -hmm. and not even care. I, I can't wait to see it. I'm going to laugh, too. <laughs> <laughs> We received that, Brian Courtney Wilson. Thank you so much. We hope we didn't keep you too long. No, nah, not at all. I enjoyed it. Thank you. All right. Take care.